Chapter 6, Part 3 of Airplane Flying Handbook, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Kachuk. Airplane Flying Handbook, Volume 1, by Federal Aviation Administration. Chapter 6, Ground Reference Maneuvers, Part 3, Elementary 8s. An 8 is a maneuver in which the airplane describes a path over the ground more or less in the shape of a figure 8. In all 8s except lazy 8s, the path is horizontal as though following a marked path over the ground. There are various types of 8s, progressing from the elementary types to very difficult types in the advanced maneuvers. Each has its special use in teaching the student to solve a particular problem of turning with relation to the earth or an object on the earth's surface. Each type, as they advance in difficulty of accomplishment, further perfects the student's coordination technique and requires a higher degree of subconscious flying ability. Of all the training maneuvers available to the instructor, only eights require the progressively higher degree of conscious attention to outside objects. However, the real importance of eights is in the requirement for the perfection and display of subconscious flying. Elementary eights, specifically eights along a road, eights across a road, and eights around pylons are variations of turns around a point, which use two points about which the airplane circles in either direction. Elementary eights are designed for the following purposes. To perfect turning technique. To develop the ability to divide attention between the actual handling of controls and an outside objective. To perfect the knowledge of the effect of angle of bank on radius of turn. To demonstrate how wind affects the path of the airplane over the ground. To gain experience in the visualization of the results of planning before the execution of the maneuver. To train the student to think and plan ahead of the airplane. Eights along a road. An eight along a road is a maneuver in which the ground track consists of two complete adjacent circles of equal radii on each side of a straight road or other reference line on the ground. The ground track resembles a figure eight. See figure 6-7. Like the other ground reference maneuvers, its objective is to develop division of attention, while compensating for drift, maintaining orientation with ground references, and maintaining a constant altitude. Although eights along a road may be performed with the wind blowing parallel to the road or directly across the road, for simplification purposes, only the latter situation is explained, since the principles involved in either case are common. A reference line or road which is perpendicular to the wind should be selected and the airplane flown parallel to and directly above the road. Since the wind is blowing across the flight path, the airplane will require some wind correction angle to stay directly above the road during the initial straight and level portion. Before starting the maneuver, the area should be checked to ensure clearance of obstructions and avoidance of other aircraft. Usually, the first turn should be made toward a downwind heading starting with a medium bank. Since the airplane will be turning more and more directly downwind, the ground speed will be gradually increasing, and the rate of departing the road will tend to become faster. Thus, the bank and rate of turn is increased to establish a wind correction angle to keep the airplane from exceeding the desired distance from the road when 180 degrees of change in direction is completed. The steepest bank is attained when the airplane is headed directly downwind. As the airplane completes 180 degrees of change in direction, it will be flying parallel to and using a wind correction angle toward the road with the wind acting directly perpendicular to the ground track. At this point, the pilot should visualize the remaining 180 degrees of ground track required to return to the same place over the road from which the maneuver started. While the turn is continued toward an upwind heading, the wind will tend to keep the airplane from reaching the road with a decrease in ground speed and rate of closure. The rate of turn and wind correction angle are decreased proportionately so that the road will be reached just as the 360 degree turn is completed. To accomplish this, the bank is decreased so that when headed directly upwind, it will be at the shallowest angle. In the last 90 degrees of the turn, the bank may be varied to correct any previous errors in judging the returning rate and closure rate. The rollout should be timed so that the airplane will be straight and level over the starting point, with enough drift correction to hold it over the road. After momentarily flying straight and level along the road, 
the airplane is then rolled into a medium bank turn in the opposite direction to begin the circle on the upwind side of the road. The wind will still be decreasing the ground speed and trying to drift the airplane back toward the road. Therefore, the bank must be decreased slowly during the first 90-degree change in direction in order to reach the desired distance from the road and attain the proper wind correction angle when 180-degree change in direction has been completed. As the remaining 180 degrees of turn continues, the wind becomes more of a tailwind and increases the airplane's ground speed. This causes the rate of closure to become faster. Consequently, the angle of bank and rate of turn must be increased further to attain sufficient wind correction angle to keep the airplane from approaching the road too rapidly. The bank will be at its steepest angle when the airplane is headed directly downwind. In the last 90 degrees of the turn, the rate of turn should be reduced to bring the airplane over the starting point on the road. The rollout must be timed so the airplane will be straight and level, turned into the wind, and flying parallel to and over the road. The measure of a student's progress in the performance of eights along a road is the smoothness and accuracy of the change in bank used to counteract drift. The sooner the drift is detected and correction applied, the smaller will be the required changes. The more quickly the student can anticipate the corrections needed, the less obvious the changes will be, and the more attention can be diverted to the maintenance of altitude and operation of the airplane. Errors in coordination must be eliminated and a constant altitude maintained. Flying technique must not be allowed to suffer from the fact that the student's attention is diverted. This technique should improve as the student becomes able to divide attention between the operation of the airplane controls and following a designated flight path. Eights across a road. This maneuver is a variation of eights along a road and involves the same principles and techniques. The primary difference is that at the completion of each loop of the figure eight, the airplane should cross an intersection of roads or a specific point on a straight road. See figure 6-8. The loops should be across the road and the wind should be perpendicular to the road. Each time the road is crossed, the crossing angle should be the same and the wings of the airplane should be level. The eights also may be performed by rolling from one bank immediately to the other, directly over the road. Eights around pylons. This training maneuver is an application of the same principles and techniques of correcting for wind drift as used in turns around a point, and the same objectives as other ground track maneuvers. In this case, two points or pylons on the ground are used as references, and turns around each pylon are made in opposite directions to follow a ground track in the form of a figure 8. See figure 6-9. The pattern involves flying downwind between the pylons and upwind outside of the pylons. It may include a short period of straight and level flight while proceeding diagonally from one pylon to the other. The pylon selected should be on a line 90 degrees to the direction of the wind and should be in an area away from communities, livestock, or groups of people to avoid possible annoyance or hazards to others. The area selected should be clear of hazardous obstructions and other air traffic. Throughout the maneuver, a constant altitude of at least 500 feet above the ground should be maintained. The 8 should be started with the airplane on a downwind heading when passing between the pylons. The distance between the pylons and the wind velocity will determine the initial angle of bank required to maintain a constant radius from the pylons during each turn. The steepest banks will be necessary just after each turn entry and just before the rollout from each turn where the airplane is headed downwind and the ground speed is greatest. The shallowest banks will be when the airplane is headed directly upwind and the ground speed is least. The rate of bank change will depend on the wind velocity the same as it does in S-turns and turns around a point, and the bank will be changing continuously during the turns. The adjustment of the bank angle should be gradual, from the steepest bank to the shallowest bank, as the airplane progressively heads into the wind, followed by a gradual increase until the steepest bank is again reached just prior to rollout. If the airplane is to proceed diagonally from one turn to the other, the rollout from each turn must be completed on the proper heading with sufficient wind correction angle to ensure that after brief straight and level flight, the airplane will arrive at the point where a turn of the same radius can be made around the other pylon. The straight and level flight segments must be tangent to both circular patterns. Common errors in the performance of elementary eights are 
failure to adequately clear the area. Poor choice of ground reference points. Improper maneuver entry considering wind direction and ground reference points. Incorrect initial bank. Poor coordination during turns. Gaining or losing altitude. Loss of orientation. Abrupt rather than smooth changes in bank angle to counteract wind drift in turns. Failure to anticipate needed drift correction. Failure to apply needed drift correction in a timely manner. Failure to roll out of turns on proper heading. Inability to divide attention between reference points on the ground, airplane control, and scanning for other aircraft. Eights on pylons. Pylon eights. The pylon eight is the most advanced and most difficult of the low-altitude flight training maneuvers. Because of the various techniques involved, the pylon eight is unsurpassed for teaching, developing, and testing subconscious control of the airplane. As the pylon eight is essentially an advanced maneuver in which the pilot's attention is directed at maintaining a pivotal position on a selected pylon with a minimum of attention within the cockpit, it should not be introduced until the instructor is assured that the student has a complete grasp of the fundamentals. Thus, the prerequisites are the ability to make a coordinated turn without gain or loss of altitude, excellent feel of the airplane, stall recognition, relaxation with low altitude maneuvering, and an absence of the error of overconcentration. Like eights around pylons, this training maneuver also involves flying the airplane in circular paths, alternately left and right in the form of a figure eight around two selected points or pylons on the ground. Unlike eights around pylons, however, no attempt is made to maintain a uniform distance from the pylon. In eights on pylons, the distance from the pylons varies if there is any wind. Instead, the airplane is flown at such a precise altitude and airspeed that a line parallel to the airplane's lateral axis and extending from the pilot's eye appears to pivot on each of the pylons. See figure 6-10. Also, unlike eights around pylons, in the performance of eights on pylons, the degree of bank increases as the distance from the pylon decreases. The altitude that is appropriate for the airplane being flown is called the pivotal altitude and is governed by the ground speed. While not truly a ground track maneuver, as were the preceding maneuvers, the objective is similar. To develop the ability to maneuver the airplane accurately, while dividing one's attention between the flight path and the selected points on the ground. In explaining the performance of eights on pylons, the term wingtip is frequently considered as being synonymous with the proper reference line or pivot point on the airplane. This interpretation is not always correct. High wing, low wing, swept wing, and tapered wing airplanes, as well as those with tandem or side-by-side -side seating, will all present different angles from the pilot's eye to the wingtip. See figure 6-11. Therefore, in the correct performance of eights on pylons, as in other maneuvers requiring a lateral reference, the pilot should use a sighting reference line that, from eye level, parallels the lateral axis of the airplane. The sighting point or line, while not necessarily on the wingtip itself, may be positioned in relation to the wingtip, ahead, behind, above, or below. But even then, it will differ for each pilot, and from each seat in the airplane. This is especially true in tandem, fore and aft seat airplanes. In side-by-side -side type airplanes, there will be very little variation in the sighting lines for different persons, if those persons are seated so that the eyes of each are at approximately the same level. An explanation of the pivotal altitude is also essential. There is a specific altitude at which, when the airplane turns at a given ground speed, a projection of the sighting reference line to the selected point on the ground will appear to pivot on that point. Since different airplanes fly at different airspeeds, the ground speed will be different. Therefore, each airplane will have its own pivotal altitude. See figure 6-12. The pivotal altitude does not vary with the angle of bank being used unless the bank is steep enough to affect the ground speed. A rule of thumb for estimating pivotal altitude in calm wind is to square the true airspeed and divide by 15 for miles per hour, MPH, or 11.3 for knots. Distance from the pylon affects the angle of bank. At any altitude above that pivotal altitude, the projected reference line will appear to move rearward in a circular path in relation to the pylon. Conversely, when the airplane is below the pivotal altitude, 
the projected reference line will appear to move forward in a circular path. See figure 6-13. To demonstrate this, the airplane is flown at normal cruising speed and at an altitude estimated to be below the proper pivotal altitude, and then placed on a medium-banked turn. It will be seen that the projected reference line of sight appears to move forward along the ground. Pylon moves back as the airplane turns. A climb is then made to an altitude well above the pivotal altitude, and when the airplane is again at normal cruising speed, it is placed in a medium-banked turn. At this higher altitude, the projected reference line of sight now appears to move backward across the ground. Pylon moves forward, in a direction opposite that of flight. After the high altitude extreme has been demonstrated, the power is reduced, and a descent at cruising speed begun in a continuing medium bank around the pylon. The apparent backward travel of the projected reference line with respect to the pylon will slow down as altitude is lost, stop for an instant, then start to reverse itself, and would move forward if the descent were allowed to continue below the pivotal altitude. The altitude at which the line of sight apparently ceased to move across the ground was the pivotal altitude. If the airplane descended below the pivotal altitude, power should be added to maintain airspeed while altitude is regained to the point at which the projected reference line moves neither backward nor forward, but actually pivots on the pylon. In this way, the pilot can determine the pivotal altitude of the airplane. The pivotal altitude is critical and will change with variations in ground speed. Since the headings throughout the turn continually vary from directly downwind to directly upwind, the ground speed will constantly change. This will result in the proper pivotal altitude varying slightly throughout the eight. Therefore, adjustment is made for this by climbing or descending as necessary to hold the reference line or point on the pylons. This change in altitude will be dependent on how much the wind affects the ground speed. The instructor should emphasize that the elevators are the primary control for holding the pylons. Even a very slight variation in altitude affects a double correction, since in losing altitude, speed is gained, and even a slight climb reduces the airspeed. This variation in altitude, although important in holding the pylon, in most cases will be so slight as to be barely perceptible on a sensitive altimeter. Before beginning the maneuver, the pilot should select two points on the ground along a line which lies 90 degrees to the direction of the wind. The area in which the maneuver is to be performed should be checked for obstructions and any other air traffic, and it should be located where a disturbance to groups of people, livestock, or communities will not result. The selection of proper pylons is of importance to good eights-on pylons. They should be sufficiently prominent to be readily seen by the pilot when completing the turn around one pylon and heading for the next, and should be adequately spaced to provide time for planning the turns and yet not cause unnecessary straight and level flight between the pylons. The selected pylons should also be at the same elevation, since differences of over a very few feet will necessitate climbing or descending between each turn. For uniformity, the eight is usually begun by flying diagonally crosswind between the pylons to a point downwind from the first pylon, so that the first turn can be made into the wind. As the airplane approaches a position where the pylon appears to be just ahead of the wingtip, the turn should be started by lowering the upwind wing to place the pilot's line of sight reference on the pylon. As the turn is continued, the line of sight reference can be held on the pylon by gradually increasing the bank the reference line should appear to pivot on the pylon. As the airplane heads into the wind, the ground speed decreases. Consequently, the pivotal altitude is lower, and the airplane must descend to hold the reference line on the pylon. As the turn progresses on the upwind side of the pylon, the wind becomes more of a crosswind. Since a constant distance from the pylon is not required on this maneuver, no correction to counteract drifting should be applied during the turns. If the reference line appears to move ahead of the pylon, the pilot should increase altitude. If the reference line appears to move behind the pylon, the pilot should decrease altitude. Varying rudder pressure to yaw the airplane and force the wing and reference line forward or backward to the pylon is a dangerous technique and must not be attempted. As the airplane turns toward a downwind heading, the rollout from the turn should be started to allow the airplane to proceed diagonally to a point on the downwind side of the second pylon. 
the rollout must be completed in the proper wind correction angle to correct for wind drift so that the airplane will arrive at a point downwind from the second pylon the same distance it was from the first pylon at the beginning of the maneuver upon reaching that point a turn is started in the opposite direction by lowering the upwind wing to again place the pilot's line of sight reference on the pylon the turn is then continued just as in the turn around the first pylon but in the opposite direction with prompt correction and a very fine control touch it should be possible to hold the projection of the reference line directly on the pylon even in a stiff wind corrections for temporary variations such as those caused by gusts or inattention may be made by shallowing the bank to fly relatively straight to bring forward a lagging wing or by steepening the bank temporarily to turn back a wing which has crept ahead with practice these corrections will become so slight as to be barely noticeable these variations are apparent from the movement of the wingtips long before they are discernible on the altimeter pylon eights are performed at bank angles ranging from shallow to steep see figure 6-14 the student should understand that the bank chosen will not alter the pivotal altitude as proficiency is gained the instructor should increase the complexity of the maneuver by directing the student to enter at a distance from the pylon that will result in a specific bank angle at the steepest point in the pylon turn the most common error in attempting to hold a pylon is incorrect use of the rudder when the projection of the reference line moves forward with respect to the pylon many pilots will tend to press the inside rudder to yaw the wing backward when the reference line moves behind the pylon they will press the outside rudder to yaw the wing forward the rudder is to be used only as a coordination control other common errors in the performance of eights on pylons pylon eights are failure to adequately clear the area skidding or slipping in turns whether trying to hold the pylon with rudder or not excessive gain or loss of altitude over concentration on the pylon and failure to observe traffic poor choice of pylons not entering the pylon turns into the wind failure to assume a heading when flying between pylons that will compensate sufficiently for drift failure to time the bank so that the turn entry is completed with the pylon in position abrupt control usage inability to select pivotal altitude end of chapter 6 part 3